Larry Tunso meet with the local media in Houston adds to the linebacker room. How everything is continuously shaping out for Nick Casario's new roster. To tie it all in, we want to develop a great team here that we can deliver wins to the city of Houston. We want to deliver a championship here to the city of Houston, and that's what it, that's what it'll be about. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody, to a Thursday episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. I'm John Hickman, and of course, I'm joined by credential media member, for the Houston Texans and the Houston Rockets and Sports Illustrated's own Cody mm. Davis here to discuss a couple of things. Denzel Perriman has been added to this linebacker core. So that's a very interesting discussion I can't wait to have. And before we talk about that, we got to start today's show with Larry Tunsil uh, meeting with the local media and our takeaways from that. Cody, you know, when I looked at what Larry Tunsil had to say, uh, one of the biggest things was when he responded to the question, where is your belief that this team will turn it around now when we go around at head coach? And, and I think that's important mm-hmm. because Laramie has went through Bill O'Brien. Laramie, in a short mm-hmm. amount of time, by the way, listeners, Bill O'Brien, Romeo Cornell, David Cully, last year, <laughs> Love You Smith, and now we go Ryans. I don't think that aside from – Bill O'Brien, and, and I, I think regardless of the terrible job he did when he was de facto general manager, uh, during that stretch, you know, a, a portion of a season for a head coach, one season here, one season here, Laramie Tunsil hasn't had much stability. When you look at his decision to return, I think that played a huge part in it. Honestly, you know, with Nico Ryans, you do trust that Brandon K. Scott put it all the time. Puts it all the time. Like the next time somebody leaves, it won't be the head coach. So mm-hmm. you have that stability with your head coach now, Demico Ryan, and that's something that I believe factor into him into Larry Tussle coming back. But he answered that question by uh, saying, "My biggest thing with staying with the Houston Texans, I believe this organization is going to turn it around quickly. This organization is on a rise, especially getting a guy like Demico Ryan in this building." He's a young energy energy guy, a younger coach, and he was actually a player here too. So getting a guy like coming into the building means a lot. We're going to try to get things turned around. I honestly believe that during contract negotiations, there, there was a process who, by the way, which by the way, Henry Tunstall said both sides were ready to get the deal done. So that was never in question. But I believe that that was a point of emphasis for him. You know, if I'm coming back, why am I coming back? Right? Like, what are you going to do for me? Because throughout that press conference, at one point, he considered himself an X Factor. And last year, he got more aggressive as a run blocker as well. But when you look at the thing that's transpired since he arrived to Houston, I honestly believe that with D'Amico Ryans as the next head coach, that does give him a sense of stability that now he can, you know, trust this organization for a couple of more years on top of becoming this baby left tackle, like, or tackling mm. the game. Like, don't get that confused. And just him having somebody that he believes can play, can help him play meaningful football, which has been absent from uh, his career for the past two to three seasons, uh, maybe even more. Well, um- my my biggest thing when I take a look at Laramie Tunsil's press conference was the fact that he is a testament on how this franchise and organization has changed. And what I saw of there was not just a veteran player. What I saw of that was not just a guy who just got lucky and got an extension. What I saw was a talented player, one of the best at his position, that has went through the thick and the thin of this rebuild with this organization. And then John, I don't know about you, but I think a lot of us, including myself, we kind of owe 
Laramie Tunsil in, a, in, a, in apology because when you go back and take a look at the 2021 campaign, um, he had a sustained um, a hand injury and he was able to come back. But so many of us criticized him for not wanting to be part of the team. So many people like myself thought that it was only a matter of time before he'd be the next talented player to walk out the door off of 16 and Kirby. And funny how things can change in a year because if anything, we thought Brandon Cooks was going to be the veteran who was going to stick around for the long term. And then Laramie Tunsil was going to be the one to leave. Nick Casario, as we know, met with both of those guys this time last year, was able to get a deal done with Brandon Cooks, got a deal done with Laramie Tunsil this year. But look, as we sit here on March 23rd, 2023, which veteran is still around Laramie Tunsil? So, you're looking at a situation where the Texans, for the first time, and I don't know how long, they did not have an opportunity to lose a talent. They're not forced to try to replace that talent that they lost. And the next biggest thing that I like from his press conference was the fact that Laramie Tunsil, even though we don't see it a lot of time, he has really taken the initiative to be a veteran leader in that locker room. He talked Love about it. helping the young guys. Love he it. talked about helping Keon Green, who's going to return as left guard right next to him. So overall, man, I love everything that I was able to see from Laramie Tunsil's press conference, man. And once again, he is a testament on how fast this rebuild is going to change for the Houston Texans. And, and I'll say this, a couple of things, man. When I watched the Laramie Tunsil press conference, Laramie Tunsil is a lineman. Let me, let me tell you, when he did his press conference, y'all, if y'all can see me on two right now, he was posted up talking, right? That's the kind of guy Larry Tunsil is, man. He's never been a guy of many words. He's always been a guy of action, but he's always been just kind of, you know, as we like to call it down here in the South, just, you know, to the hospitality type of guy, you know, uh, mm. uh, a humble guy, man, and I think that's the type of player you really want. Then I think that is the type of player you want in this building. And I love the fact that you alluded to, you know, taking away he wants to mentor to the guys that's coming into the locker room, and he doesn't live with that to the offensive of alignment. You know, he mentioned Jalen Petrie, Damian mm -hmm. Pierce. So it is important to have a guy of his stature be that, you know, go-to figure because he's seen a lot. He's seen a lot. Before his, you know, the draft process, we remember that, right? He's seen a lot during the Houston Texans era of his time where he's been through the ups and the downs, right? A lot of lows, only a couple of highs. And he is the perfect guy to go to. Like, hey, you know, LT, let me talk to you real quick, man. Like, you know, this is what's going on on the field, off the field. What better guy? Because I believe that he isn't a man of many words, but he can get you where you need to go, help you get to where you need to go. So, Getting on the again was huge for the Houston Texans. Uh, I will say this. I've said it before. I think it was on the January 23rd or 24th show that it was a priority to retain Larry Tunsil, not mm -hmm. as much as it was to it may be for Titus Howard. I think this year coming up is a very important year for Titus Howard. I love the fact that Houston got Titus Howard a stable running mate. Uh, this whole offseason, you can use the word stability to you know as an adjective to 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 put next to how houston approached it build stability before you actually build in talent and they got talent as well but jack next to titus howard i think will do wonders for titus howard because this is an important year for titus howard i'm not so sure where houston has him in terms of how much they want to spend and his value to the texan compared to what somebody else will pay him I'm not sure how that, you know, adds up right now. So I love the fact that Houston is doing it. I love the fact that Houston is retaining Larry Russell. Give this opportunity to the offensive line to showcase how good they can be as a collective unit. NCAA tournament is heating up and the end of the basketball season is here. But now is still the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. And bonus back if your first bit doesn't win, just download the FanDuel app right now. It's safe, it's secure, it's easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points girl scores, excuse me, and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your best for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlays. 
Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bet back. You go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook betting partner of the NBA and college basketball. Welcome back in, live on Texan listeners and viewers out there in the YouTube world. If you are listening but not subscribed to the YouTube page, please give us a subscription under the name Locked On Texans on YouTube and also on all of the major podcasting platforms. Before we hop into the Denzel Perryman news, Larry Thompson was on the Pat McAfee show, and one of the questions that came up was about St. Omni. St. Omni is the guy that helped uh, Larry Tunsil get this contract done. And as of late, there's been a uh, like a, a mystery surrounding St. Omni because <laughs> nobody knows who he is. Nobody has seen his face. Nobody can find a picture of him. <laughs> when you ask people, like his clients, like Larry Tunsil, they never give you much. Larry Tunsil said he's always around when I need him. You know, like the, the cliche response, but you cannot find anything on Saint <laughs> Omni. And I'm starting to wonder like who this man or person or woman, who that person really is. Because getting Larry Tunsil this deal, mm. I know you have other clients that are reaching out to you. And and I wonder, like is this day gonna get her and, he, and he's just like I, I don't know like is is he just a alternate verse I don't know but uh, again shout out to Laramie Tunsil who has hired a great team to help him negotiate his contracts doesn't have an agent but he does have a team behind him and apparently Saint Omni whoever this person is is a part of that uh, structure a team uh, now with Denzel Perryman. Officially, the Texans have signed seven players that they face in the 2022 season. That's interesting. So this whole time, uh, Nick Casario was out there scouting. <laughs> Denzel Perriman was a pro bowler in 2021. Uh, Perriman missed five games last season with an ankle sprain, a hip strain, and a dislocated shoulder. Now, this is what I want to get into. Denzel Perriman and Christian Kersey are both Linebackers. Kirksey mm-hmm. has a cap hit of six point two million dollars. The Texans can save five point two million dollars if they release Kirksey because he only has one million dollars of his deal guaranteed. On Wednesday show, I mentioned how Corey Littleton can make uh Kirksey more extendable. Now I think this is definitely the move that gives Houston the flexibility. Uh, with determining the future of Christian Kirksey. With Kirksey deal uh, being very Texans friendly, I see a rush to cut him. I think that there's a couple of players that could end up being camp casualties, like a Derrick Rivers and EJ Perry, being Quentin Perry and Dater. Uh, I think Kirksey is also in that boat to where it works out more in the favor of Houston. So giving them an opportunity to go through camp and, and you know, evaluating what their value is to the roster. Look at the center position again: Quisenberry, Dater, now uh, Jimmy Morrissey, and I do expect the Houston since to draft the center. Same with the linebacker position. It's now six linebackers on the roster right now: Perryman, Harris, Kirksey, Wallow, Cashman, Hanson, and Littleton. Of those three players, all are one-year deals. So it works out in the favor of Houston to allow those guys to go through the process of camp the offseason workouts, get an idea of what they want to do with those players. Uh, I'm not saying that the Houston Texans should cut Kirksey now unless they have some more players out there that they want to bring in on this roster. And cutting Kirksey does freeze up $5.2 million, which will allow you some opportunity to play around with the free agency to bring those guys in. Uh, and we've seen Houston do a lot of these one-year deals, hung around 2.5, 2.7, 3.2, and, you know, million dollar deals, so where it still works out in the favor of the organization. I would be upset at that. However, this could be an opportunity for Kirksey and the Texans to, you know, look each other in the eye and say, you know what, put my value to you, 
You see what I'm worth to this franchise, whether or not you want to keep me around, and then we'll go from there. But I will say, $5, $2 million on a, on, on, on a linebacker that I believe is entering his ninth or tenth season it doesn't necessarily add much to your value for the future. Wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea, um, but there is a possibility that goes through camp. It doesn't add much to the future of the Houston Texans, but Denzel signing adds talent at that position. Um, and some talents that are actually going to improve the Houston Texans play in 2023. John, we talked about it here a lot on this show, especially over the last two weeks, that a lot of the players that Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans have signed um, is an indication that they don't want to be picking number one, number two, number three in the NFL draft once again. They, these are all signings to let you know, hey, look, we might not be a playoff team, but we're going to be competitive. D'Amico Ryans talked about it a lot in his introductory practice conference a couple weeks ago when we talked to Bobby Slowey, when we talked to Matt Burt, the offensive and defensive coordinator, all of those guys gave an indication that the Houston Texans are not going to go out there and just compete, but they're going to go out there and try to win games. Once again, this is an organization that had only won seven games over the last three seasons, if I'm not mistaken. And when you take a look at the addition of Denzel, not only is he going to improve the linebacking core, but he's definitely going to improve the Houston Texans run defense. This is a guy, last year alone, ended the 2022 campaign with a run defensive grade of 80.5. And when you take a look at the addition of Denzel, when you take a look at the addition of Sheldon, when you take a look at the addition of Corey Littleton, those three guys combined have a run defensive grade of 72.6, which means there is no way in hell the Houston Texans will finish the 2023 campaign at the bottom of the league in run defense. This is a team that has given up an average of 150 to 160 yards on the ground over the last three seasons. In 2022 alone, they gave up an average of 170. And this isn't going to repeat itself, of course, given injuries and you know how the rotations and everything are going to play out. But this is a team that is not going to be at the bottom of the league in terms of wins and damn sure not at the bottom of the league in terms of run defense. Thanks for making the Locked On Texans your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes. From free agency to draft, salary cap management, and more, join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful franchise every Monday through Friday. Find Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day before we get out of here here are some interesting numbers and news i guess i i, I would classify it then they'll signing with the houston texans the texans now have six players on their current defense entering age 30 or older this season plus another three on offense so you know the, and the texans are you know getting older through free agency but, guys, when I see that number, a lot of people may may panic and freak out. However, they will get younger through the 11 picks they have in the NFL draft. <laughs> so, and those positions will be getting younger at quarterback, for one. Um, mm. Receiver, I'm sure. You still got mm. Damian Pierce from last year. Yes, you still sir. have Jared Petrie and Derek Singley from last year. You Future still goats. have a Christian Harris from last year. I'm sure they will address the linebacker position, the, the center position. So some of these guys <laughs> that are on the roster right now will not make the 53-man roster. Plain and simple. So don't worry. Don't panic. Don't freak. Now, Cody, the Carolina Panthers are either really in on C.J. Stroud like they were 12 years ago with Cam Newton, or they're trying to play games with the Houston Texans. Uh, they had damn near the whole organization for the Carolina Panthers at Ohio State Pro Day. Go out there and watch C.J. Stroud. Uh, <clears throat> C.J. Stroud throw the ball, who, by the way, an amazing pro day. Like He's my quarterback number one in this year's draft. 
But I want to let you guys know. But also, Nick Mysterio was at SMU's Pro Day on Wednesday as well. Uh, the Houston Texans officially signed as many free agents as everyone else. This NFL offseason, they signed 15 players. And a lot of them are recognizable names, by the way. So that's important news because in the last two years, there was a lot of who? Who is this guy? So now you have a shield of rankings in the building, Shaq Mason in the building. Uh, you got the acquisition with Devin Singletary, Robert Woods. Houston has built a very good team through free agency. But there is no way Houston jumps up, right? Like they stay at two and take – who the next best quarterback is. And Bryce Young met with the Carolina Panthers last night for dinner. Just throwing that information out there. But Houston will not jump up, will they? Hell no. Like, that would be so dumb. Like I said, it it would be different if it was just Bryce coming in or just CJ coming in. And, John, you talked about, you know, the the – the Carolina Panthers playing games with the Houston Texans, make it, make it pretend like they're all in on CJ. It kind of reminds me of the NBA draft last year when the Orlando Magic made it pretend like they was all in on Jabari Smith Jr. and ended up taking Paolo Vecaro. Um, And that's how, you know, the city of Houston ended up with Jabari Smith. But, you know, there is no way in hell the Houston Texans are going to trade up one spot ahead just to have their pick of the ladder between CJ or Bryce. I mean, both of those guys, I really do think that it's a, it, it, it's a if you pick this guy, I'm picking the other, or and, and vice versa because both of these guys are the top two prospects at the position. And John, to me at least, in my opinion, I don't see a difference outside of size. I don't see a difference in between neither one of these guys in terms of talent. Um, but I would be happy with, with either or. But as of right now, I think the Houston Texans are in a position to go out and get Bryce Young. Um, and if that is the case, then you're looking at the Houston Texans would definitely have their new franchise quarterback. Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texas, and then use those same fingers. Scroll over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button, the like button, the comment button. Tell us how you really feel. You like the show, love the show, indifferent, whatever. How do you feel about the Texans? Let us know about that as well. We got to get back to the YouTube comments. Well. So we'll get back to that as well. And follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore 24. I will be back in the H soon, guys. Just bear with me here. I here in Memphis. I know I sound different. Probably look a little bit different as well, but it's gonna be in the in the words of but we it's gonna be old Tay. <laughs> but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.